We have three on the queue for questions. Representative Meeks, you're first, and you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Director Allison, Director Thompson. Um, my question is, first of all, you're saying that we have 150,000 that are eligible for the private option. How many are currently enrolled and we're paying premiums for? We have just over 80,000 uh, that we are paying premiums for in the month of March. Um, we'll begin a new month next week, and that total is just a few people shy of 102,000 that we'll be paying premiums for. Okay, and, uh, and do you expect to have all 150,000 are currently eligible signed up by July 1st? Or do you think that between now and then, some of those people will drop off? We do expect turnover. We've already seen some turnover. Yes, that occurs. So the number of eligibility determinations will, will exceed the number who are actually enrolled at any of the three stages that Dr. Thompson referred to, either those who are in the enrollment process, those who have already been determined to be frail and, and are and will be in the traditional Medicaid program, and thirdly, these who are actually in the private insurance uh, coverage group. So of the 150 who have currently, who have been determined eligible, uh, those who don't have private coverage or <coughs> Medicaid during their enrollment phase, or they've already been determined uh, medically frail or with exception, they say 15,000 of that 150 who will not be enrolled in private health plans by July. They're medically frail. So of the 150, currently 135 we would expect to enroll in, in private insurance. Some of those may, may yet come back to the, uh, to the web portal to take the screen and be determined medically frail. Some, as you say, uh, might be determined ineligible between now and July. Uh, but yes, other than medically frail, they will end up in private coverage. So something that you said is perfect to another question while we're on the subject. So the 48,000, because you said 80 going to 102,000. So the 48,000 currently right now are Medicaid eligible or, or using or able to use Medicaid services. Is that correct? That's correct. What we have seen so far is that the use of the Medicaid ID number by those who are not Medicaid frail and are really just in the enrollment phase has been minimal. Uh, it, it, Years that they're waiting for uh, enrollment in the private insurance uh, uh, to spur use. Is it also possible that they're not finding doctors? Because I know even in Conway, in a physician rich area, that um, there are a lot of doctors who are not taking Medicaid. And I guess as a follow up question, is that causing confusion? Because I've had folks come back to me and they're saying that doctors are not taking private options. And I'm trying to get clarification as to whether or not when these patients are calling, they're saying, you know, I'm part of Medicaid or whatever, um, and is that creating confusion as to actually being able to find doctors? Yes, in fact, I signed some guidance today. We'll, we're going to try to communicate more with our providers to help them understand more or less the three phases or three types or categories of Medicaid, uh, I'm sorry, private option eligibles that there are, uh, so that they understand um, what it means when they, uh, when, when they use the web, our web service to try to look up a, a Medicaid ID number and uh, don't find one if the person's eligible because they should have a private insurance card or the reverse. So yeah, I think there's a great deal of uh, education where you know, we are attempting to do that without uh, you know, a significant new administrative spend uh, uh, by DHS on you know, an army of outreach workers, for example. Um, Yes, we do hear uh, the same kinds of uh, stories as, as both providers and the population, uh, the target population, become familiar with these, with this terminology and these distinctions, and uh, and there will. So if it's not getting through your colleagues, just let me make sure we track. So if somebody comes in that's determined eligible, a federal requirements, they are covered on that day, and for a period of time, Medicaid offers them coverage until Medicaid is able to pay the premium and get them in the insurance plan. It's a minimum of probably three weeks. If they come in late in the month, it could be six weeks because it bridges to the market. We're encouraging folks to uh, wait till you get your commercial card and engage with the commercial period, but you have emergency coverage. 
during that window that you're on Medicaid on the front end. And some people may be seeking 